So imagine we've got a solution of something in the lab, something like this, and it's a 25 millimolar, and we want to dilute it down so it's only 0.5 millimolar. How do we do that? First of all, we've got to decide what volume of the diluted working solution that we want. So let's say that we want 1500 microliters. So we want 1500 microliters of a 0.5 millimolar solution. And we're starting with a 25 millimolar solution. How do we do this? How do we dilute this solution down to get this? Well, first thing we need to know is to what volume of this that we want to take. So let's say that this is our stock solution here. So that's the bottle that I've just shown you, and that's concentrated. And so we're going to call this C1, and C1 here is equal to 25 millimolar. And V1 is the volume that we want to take, and that's unknown at the moment. And we're going to dilute it down So that we end up with 1500 microliters, so V2 is equal to 1500 microliters, 1 1.5 mil, and C2 over here is equal to 0.5 millimolar. So we can invoke C1 V1 is equal to C2 V2, so C1 is 25 millimolar, V1 is the unknown, V2 is 1500 millimolar and C2 is 0.5 millimolar there. Uh, so we want to solve for V1. So V1 is equal to C2 V2 divided by C1, which is equal to, so C2 is 0.5 millimolar. Uh, V2 is 1500 microliters, that's times 1500 microliters there. And C1 it's this stuff, it's 25 millimolar. So we need to calculate this out. So 0 0.5 times 1500 is 750. So it's 750 millimolar microliters. There, I'm always keeping the units there. That's divided by 25 millimolar there. The millimolars cancel out. 750 divided by 25 equals 30 microliters. So notice it doesn't matter what units I use so long as I'm consistent. If I use millimolar on the top, I've got to use millimolar on the bottom. If we use microliters here, the answer there is going to be microliters. So we need to take 30 microliters of this, there. We need 1500 microliters in total. So what that's going to mean, so somewhere over here, We've got our diluent, normally deionized water or buffer or something there. So we're going to add the diluent into here, along with our 30 microliters here. So the diluent here is going to be equal to V2 minus V1, which is equal to 1500 microliters minus 30 microliters, which is equal to 14, excuse me, 14 70 microliters. So, to make 1500 microliters of a 0.5 millimolar solution, starting with a 25 millimolar stock, you've got to take 30 microliters and mix it with 1470 microliters of your diluent. So, now let's take a slightly different example. Let's take the example where we know what our stock solution is, and we know how much of it we took, and we know what the final volume is. So here, we can imagine that we took 50 mils of a 15 micromolar solution, and we put it in a container, and we made it up to 175 mils. So we added 125 mil of our diluent, so that's buffer or deionized water or whatever. And we want to know what the concentration is in here. So C1, V1 is equal to C2, V2. So C1 is what we started with, is 15 micromolar. V1, 15 mil, because 50 mil, because that's what we took. C2 is what we are trying to find out. And V2 is the total volume here, is the 50 mil plus the 125 mil of diluent there. So we want to solve for C2. So C2 here is equal to C1, 
V1 divided by V2. So that is equal to 15 micromolar. times 50 mil divided by V2, which is 175 mil. So the mils are going to cancel out here, so the answer is always going to be in, in uh, micromolar. So 15 times 50 here is 750. So that's 750 micromolar mils there divided by 175 mils, which is equal to 4.3, well the mils have cancelled out so we're left with a micromolar, 4.3 micromolar. So if you take 50 mils of a 15 micromolar solution and make it up to 175 mil, the final concentration, the concentration in here is 4.3 micromolar. So there's another way to think about this. So you don't have to use C1V1 equals C2V2. You can use dilution factors as well. Uh, either way, you come up with exactly the same answer and algebraically they're equivalent. Uh, some people prefer one way, other people prefer another way, but you should know both ways. So let's look at how we could have done this using dilution factors instead of C1V1 equals C2V2. So V1 here was 50 mils there and it got diluted down to 175 mils so um, the dilution factor here is 175 mil diluted by or divided by 50 mil there so that's equal to 3.5 so we've diluted this 3.5 fold compared to this here now if we multiply our dilution factor so if we multiply 3.5 by our concentration here, we'll get the wrong answer because there's going to be more dilute there. So what we need to do is we need to take our 15 micromolar, this one here, and divide it by 3.5. And the answer there is equal to 4.3. And the answer must be 4.3 micromolar because this here is a ratio, so it's got no units. So whether you use dilution factors or C1V1, you end up with exactly the same answer. Some people prefer to think about it one way, others another way.